to see the spear golems come through uh, for one crown, but otherwise, the ice spirit just to mitigate the damage. And once again, the miner is going to be the card of choice for one crown in this instance. Yeah, good mega minion there. Placed it right on top of the miner. About as good as you can hope for there from Carolus. He's got the ice golem coming here. With the bats for one crown. Now we can see a little bit of their hands, and I did see a prince in one crown's hand. Nice fireball there to take out the flying machine. Okay, we're gonna see a Hawk Rider uh, coming from Carolus and the, obviously the, the Mortar is not gonna be doing a good job right when the Hawk Rider is in front of you. So, Hawk Rider is gonna be mitigated for, uh, but we're gonna see the Spear Goblins, see what it can do. Yeah, good placement there with the Spear Goblins. Well outside of range of any other spells for the most part other than Poison to do damage to that Hawk Rider while it locked onto that Mortar. We're going to see once again the Mega Man just taking care of the Miner, but Miner will get its job done before it goes away. 18-15 onto the right side as the bats are coming through once again for this Mega Man. Right, so a bit of, you know, just a Hog Rider cycle deck, a little bit of a different take on it though with the Flying Machine and the, uh, the Ice Golem here. So maybe a little bit different than what you're used to seeing with Hog Rider cycle decks. No goblins here to back it up. We know Prince can be a good counter against the Hog Rider, but with the Prince is going to be halted every single second uh, by those little skeletons coming from that tombstone. You know, you're in a bit of trouble for one crown. Definitely the Prince is not going to be in a winning condition from him. Yeah, definitely not. The Prince is definitely more of a defensive unit here. Let something lock on to the mortar and then let the Prince clean it up if possible. Good Mega Minion placement again, no delay between when it starts taking its swipes onto the Miner, but the story of the game so far is actually the Miner. It is doing most of the damage here to uh, Carolus's Princess Towers. I can see once again the Mortar being placed down. The Prince is going to be doing a good job. I'm trying to hold down the Hog Rider. Hog Rider will finally get to the tower. We'll get one swing. Gets it down to 17-21. We know what this Prince is going to be struggling to do. The Mega Minion already preemptively summoned to make sure it is ready to take on that Miner. Still limited to three swipes. Right, Log coming down to take down these Spear Goblins. Flying Machine here, but a quick fireball there. It barely gets any shots off there. I don't even think he got one off there, Joel. They only got one, but the Hog Rider is going to be the main character they're going to be focusing on for one crown and see what damage he can get done here. And the, the Miner here, once again, doing a little bit of damage over time. going to get almost three swipes. Doesn't really get that down. And the Hog Rider probably going to be summoned once again with the Flying Machine. So with this Fireball that's going to be coming through, does oh. get pretty good value, but does not go all the way to the Flying Machine. So Flying Machine, how is going to get taken care of here? Yeah, Spear Goblin's coming in to take uh -oh. up some damage from the Flying Machine. Bats coming down against the Flying Machine, though. Flying Machine, one hit, two hits there. That is nice for Carolus. Maybe a two hits, uh, but the Miner is still ongoing with all this damage coming through. And the uh, Mega Minions coming in with the Flying Machine, with the Hawk Rider. But what can you see uh, with this Hawk Rider trying to come in? You can see if the damage comes through and that. Uh, a fireball that will not be good enough to give the Hog Rider a single swing, but the bats once again ready to take down the Mega Minion. Yeah, both players just trying to cycle through and get as much chip damage as they can. Oh, the slow bat, the slow bat. Oh, okay, almost. Uh, we saw that one bat do a little bit of the storytelling, uh, taking out some damage. There, 832 on the right side, 900. We're gonna see once again the Morna just drawing in uh, the Hog Rider while the Prince is able to take care of it. Once again, the flying machine. It's just there, but we're going to be taking down the fireball pretty soon here. Yep. Fireball comes oh, what? in. Oh, oh, the fireball misses. It missed. Uh -oh. oh, no. Okay. That could be a big deal for one crown here. One crown. He has the flying machine bolting in here, and uh, the log's going to be doing a pretty good job. But gets that one swing from the hog rider, and the flying machine is still there, just forcing one crown to use another two elixir summon just to get the bats out. Right. A bit of a mistake, but he can still pull this out. The miner's still getting quite a bit of damage done here. Flying Machine comes through again, Hog Rider following it up, all of them taking that Fireball, much better so Fireball. Getting the fireball and just making sure you cover back from what you missed last time, and the Log's trying to just get through and make it allow that Hog Rider to get a single swing, but the Spirit Goblin's going to be taking out the damage one at a time, 552, 448, and it's still on going with the Santa Shark. Right, able to cycle the Log, both players, a defensive Fireball coming through here, oh. but ooh, not quite getting the swing in is the Hog Rider. Mega Minion locked onto that print. The Bats try to deal with that Mega Minion. The Miner comes in. This time it's stopped a little bit. Doesn't do too, too much damage. 236 is not enough for one Fireball, but a Fireball and a Log will do it. A Log Fireball will be good enough, and one Crown gets the jump done, and very, very close. Uh, you know, crucial mistakes uh, near at the end. And here we are. 
One Crown going up against JTV. One Crown looking to get the clean sweep over his opponent. The Mind Index bringing a page out of the book. One Crown in. Able to connect onto the tower. The Goblin Gang not in the best position to start this game off. Yeah, One Crown getting a little more value there out of his Spear Goblins. They went through and did just a little bit more damage. There's the Balloon. The Balloon Miner deck from JTV ah. here. Bats and a Mortar to defend. Okay, the Sap was there, but... Uh, that little mortar uh, will not allow the balloon to stick its bomb right onto that princess tower. And we'll just go down, get the explosion damage, maybe. All across the edge, and it does get the explosion damage just in time. Yeah, great placement by one crown to try to buy as much time as he could for that balloon, putting it up by the river there. Keeps the balloon, you know, as, as far away from that princess tower as long as possible. And it will take two drops uh, from the balloon uh, to take down fully the mortar there, so. Kind of counting on his chances. Uh, one crown in. Uh, put that defensive effort into you. So once again, the balloon is there. The mortar, will it be ready this time around? It will be. Yeah, he's got the same kind of setup here. The spear goblins come in. Zapped are the spear goblins, but there's still a spear goblin left from the goblin gang. That helps so much. Yep, yep. Will the explosion damage reach? No, it's just barely. 1620, getting the good piece of chunk from one crown's tower. And it's going to be JTV. Only winning in so far with all this explosion damage that comes through from the balloon, but otherwise he's looking for that troll. That's what he's looking for. Yeah, absolutely. We still don't know what his last card is here for JTV. S saving something special here, probably for when we get to 2x elixir time. In the meantime, just cycling through cards. Goblin Gang, bridge spam coming in. Just going to go right for that tombstone. Here comes the balloon once again. Order placed a little further back this time, and a minor as well here for JTV. Going we'll for full defense on this effort. That one drop will be able to get things through, and with the minor forward and the fireball, very very reactive there. But one count still takes a lot of damage on that left side. Yeah, that minor got so many swings in there while the Mega Minion kind of tanked that. Mega Minion coming in to defend. One Crown's Miner gets a little bit of damage done. Those Spear Goblins hit so much harder now since their buff a couple patches ago. Here comes this push again, the Miner Balloon. Oh. High school and push. Okay, the Miner is not stuck fully, and uh, Mora, once again, is doing a pretty good job of stomping out the Balloon, but we need another Fireball here. Any guy much gonna get that in. Lots of Elixir used once again just to stop that one Balloon. Yeah, interesting that JTV tried the Lightning oh. there, or uh, Zap there, it didn't quite work. Tombstone not in the right spot yeah. to defend against that mine. He's gonna bring the tower down to 753. All JTV is wanting is that one drop from the balloon, but he just might not get it as all these pesky units are slowing things down and might not get explosion damage even. That's, that's pretty far away. Yeah, Wallen Crown with great defense there. Here comes his counter push. He does get uh, his miner to connect onto the tower of JTV. So a bit of a favorable exchange for him, but there's a lot of units coming in here. Mortar placed down for defense. The Ice Golem in the balloon. Let's see if he can get it through this time. You can see, you can see the, the balloon getting a couple of drops onto the mortar, but will never be able to reach the tower. And sprint coming from the left side might be dangerous. Yeah, these zaps are just a little slow from JTV. They're not quite in time to protect his balloon. He needs to predict it. it. He's going to make it work, and that will be it. You're right, Joel. Fireball comes in. Game number two of the King of the Hill here goes to one crown. Yeah, we were kinda, yeah, we were kind of talking about the... Good luck uh, being thrown out once again by Benzerido and one crown just as they did it in that 1v1 instance in the Royal House all on one side. Very aggressive play to start things off. Yeah, the Royal Ghost coming in to defend here. Does a pretty good job cleaning that up when it's only on one side. Not much damage at all coming in here, but a Mini P.E.K.K.A. unit we don't get to see too, too often here from Benzer right up. Okay, bring out the Mini P.E.K.K.A. All Crown says, this is the real P.E.K.K.A. Coming <laughs> very, very slowly. Only about two swipes away for that Mini P.E.K.K.A. to go down. Yeah, just one. Just one. It's it, The Mini P.E.K.K.A. does not do well against regular P.E.K.K.A. Turns out bigger P.E.K.K.A.s are better. Who would have thought? You sometimes think that, but you know, got other stories waiting in line. But the Magic Archer Ooh. is going to be poisoned away, and these little bats doing a very good job. Seems like no zap, obviously, with the wall being thrown out by one crown. Nothing for to do, and the uh, Royal Hawks on the other end. Fireball, better counter for that one. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect fireball there by Ben Zerydel. Minimizes the damage he takes from those Royal Hogs. So this is kind of an interesting little deck that Benza Rydell is running. He's got Mini P.E.K.K.A. Done. Now normally when we see Magic Archer, we've seen it paired with P.E.K.K.A. Typically, does he have that as well as one of his last two cards? Uh, you think a Mini P.E.K.K.A. and a P.E.K.K.A. might be in the same deck? Maybe. I, I, I don't know for sure. I uh, It's not 
it's not completely 100% confirmed or anything. But, you, like I said, usually when we see Magic Archer, it's paired with Pekka. Okay, so maybe the idea kind of thrown out the air in terms of Magic Archer pairing up with the, the Mini Pekka. Yeah. Be a new possibility of a situation there. But once again, going with this situation where he's not opting for the Fireball against these Royal Hogs fans or Rhydoi, he's going to go for the Goblin Gang. Yeah, so no Pekka here. It's just Al. Hogs and whoops. Uh-oh. Oops. Uh-oh. That might have been a bit of a misclick. That might have been a bit of a misclick there by Benzer Rydell. You know, we talked about 40,000 gold and throwing out that into the river. That was five elixirs, literally. Put it in the bag and just uh, <laughs> throw it out the river. And wow, that was a bad play coming from Benzer Rydell. He might just regret that one. Yeah, here come the counter hogs here. Nice fireball wow, good going one. from Benzer Rydell. And even the match gotcha is going to take care of the Royal Hall just make sure they don't get a single bite into that Princess Tower. The poison is going to be able to take care of the match gotcha for now. Right, so a little bit of an interesting deck here we're seeing from Benzer right now. We haven't quite seen this combination in cards before, so see if he can make it work. He gets some decent damage on that push from the Hogs. The Counter Hogs coming here from one crown. He's got the Goblin Gang to defend. Goblin Gang and the Mini Pekka helping out as well, but still going to take a couple of damage. Now seven elixirs just for defense, so you can see on the left side, the Royal Hogs once again coming in. The Log and also the Royal Ghost just trying to do its best. Yes, match number 10, but that mini Pekka all to the oh. right side. It's going to kill off the Electro Wizard. Gonna get one swing, get that second swing as well. So 1150, all about the, all of a sudden, uh, the, de the tension is going to be on the right side for Ben's Rhino. That's a big deal. You can't let mini Pekka get in on a tower. He does so much damage, almost as much damage as the regular Pekka. This time, the Log coming down to defend. Of course, now Benzer Rydell is switching his focus, but there is so much damage on the left side, Princess Tower. Oh my goodness, it's all over. You have to focus so many of your abilities and so many of your resources on getting the damage down on even both sides. But Benzer Rydell is going to be looking pretty good after a lot of mistakes were, uh, for the first time, haven't been dealt it. Uh, by the side of one crown, it might be the situation where he might just regret the situation. You see the, the tower being pretty safe on that 240 mark right now. Yeah, left-hand tower though, fireball log away from being destroyed. So this should be just about it, I believe, as long as he can defend here. Here come the hogs as well. This, might be it. this should be the final push. He just needs that last two elixir for the fireball. That'll do it anyway. Really, with that log, taking out the skeletons. Uh, that was gonna be here we are. After Benzerido taking down one crown. Bounce looking towards Ogenentis, uh, seeing if they have their opportunities to win out this game. And the thumbs <laughs> being thrown out there. Benzerido, how replies back, but uh, what do we see from this? The Electro Wizard is definitely there. It's going to slow things down. The Skeleton is going to be there as well. Are we going to see something? What are we going to get? This is a weird deck already with the poison. Well, Hal's deck looks like it's going to be some kind of variant on Pekka. Most likely, the, so. the Royal Ghost comes in. That kind of makes it feel like a Pekka deck. It could be a Giant as well. You could it definitely do like, Giant. It looks like a Lava Hound deck, kind of, but... Could be that too, actually. You're absolutely but we don't, right. But Lava Hound is banned now. Yeah, that's true. So it can't uh, be Lava Hound. <laughs> so, you know, it's a weird deck altogether. Those last two cards aren't revealed for now. I don't get me the questions. We're being trying to get the answer to. The Royal Ghost, once again, kind of being ignored by the Mega Minions. In the meantime, uh, the three muskies. And this might be the giant deck you've been talking about. Yeah, absolutely could be here. Poison coming down to take care of the right-hand side, three muskies. So looks like Hall has a pretty decent defense for it so far. It's a little bit ahead now. Ooh, here comes the Hogs to back up this push, though. He only has the e -Wiz on the left-hand side. Drops the Royal Ghost oh, on the right-hand side. Oh, the Musketeer is doing such good work. On to that left side, and the Royal Ghost is going to be able to handle the rest of the Royal Hogs on the right side, but still takes a decent amount of damage from it. Once again, the Skeleton's there. This is a nice change up here from Benzer Rydell on this type of deck. The Royal Hogs make you think it might be something like Pekka or Giant. Three Musketeers, a very nice curveball. It really is a Three Musketeers. What are we going to get for the last two unprevealed cards? We're going to see another a series of uh, Fireball and a Log against uh, these Royal Hogs. It's going to be the the main win condition for Hall once again. So last reveal card most likely will be another spell, but we're gonna see from the situation we're gonna find out. Right, right. It, it could be a spell, it could be Pekka. Uh, I'm curious to see what Hall opts to do here, but he's gonna have a tough time with Pekka because of the multiple unit pushes that are gonna be coming from Benzer Rydell with this deck. See the Electro Wizard and the Mega Man just trying to stop all this rush coming in. Doesn't do a very good job. 14, 13, still takes a decent amount of damage here. Yeah, okay, these Musketeers getting split up enough to not take 
all three of them taking damage from the poison. Of course, the Musketeers do just barely survive a poison. They do. It will go down in the end. The Electro Wizard will be able to take the, the job into getting things done. And the Fireball, once again, very good tool uh, with the Hunter. Beautiful uh, defense off the left side. 1370 down and 1413 on the right side. And once again, going for the Royal Hawks. Yeah, extremely close game here so far. Log and Royal Ghost coming down to defend against this Hog push on the right hand side. Okay. Pekka, there it is. Okay, now is his opportunity. He's got to try to make this work. The three That's musketeers poison. will poison. do so much damage. This is going to be a wonderful poison value right now. Getting all of those three muskets for four elixir, getting maximum value, literally destroying out all of those nine elixir costs. Yeah, that's that's pretty much worth there for Hall. He comes out just a little bit ahead. And again, this this fireball hunter defense does good. a pretty good job against these hogs. And 977 against 975, it can't get closer than this. And still moving forward here, the logs and it slow things down, but the Four Hogs are still charging in, and the Electro Wizard is not going to be the ultimate answer for all of this. And 537 down to 478. It's going to be the answer onto the right side, but you don't want to invest on the right tower if you are Hal. Yeah, this is starting oh. to get a little bit dangerous for Hal. I don't like this. Hal is splitting the Royal Hogs, just trying to get damage onto the right side, but eventually you're not going to get more damage than you are already at the 70 29 mark. So I don't know if splitting the damage was the right decision there. Yeah, now a huge push is yeah. coming in here from Benzer Rydell. These Hogs just need a couple hits here to that's get it. it within Fireball. That's it. Yep, that's it. Fireball's coming. Not even needed. Wow. Now if you are a Hall, you did have a lot of units uh, defending on the right side and leading into a counter push. I understand that, but... Good luck. Always thrown out uh, by Benzer Rydell. Throwing up positivism. Towards his opponents. Oh! Positivity. Not aim with this mortar here. Mortar. Interesting. Interesting. Gonna go down pretty quickly to that Goblin Gang. A lot of elixirs invested, though, onto that. Like, let's see, it once again, a Rascal on the other side. So, wow. I don't usually see <laughs> Rascals on both teams here. Yeah, right. You don't often see them played together. Log bait. Yeah, it feels like log bait. You're right, Joel. It definitely smells like it. Goblin Barrel on its way for Shannon Smokey. <laughs> definitely here. <laughs> but the Miner is going to be the choice for Ben's Rhino. Shannon Smokey, is he preparing? This uh, Prince deck that has been working with the Goblin Barrel. So it has been thrown out, so seems like they're still working up upon decision. Of course, the Spirit Goblin is there to slow things down for that Prince. Make sure he doesn't get the charge in. Yep, so not much doing for either, either of the players so far. Just very minimal damage to the towers. A little bit ahead is Shot and Smooky there, but there you go. I was gonna say, are you absolutely. telling me you don't absolutely. have a Goblin Barrel in that deck? Yeah, absolutely. He's gotta use Fireball on it too, so that's not a great exchange there for Benzer Rydell. He loses an Elixir in that exchange. So absolutely, you know, this. once the Princess comes down, it's almost just like, well, this is probably Spellbait. Yeah, Spellbait with the, uh, the Rascals and with the Goblin Gang. You know it has to be that one. and. Uh, Seems like the Rascals on the defensive end for Shadow Smokey is doing a pretty good job with the Rascal Girls dying out. Uh, but they're portraying uh, mortars of these pellets that are throwing out. Still the more damage they go over uh, for Shadow Smokey once again, coming Whoa. towards with this extremely aggressive push. This is dangerous. Oh no, this is dead. This is bad. Shadow Smokey has nothing for this. No, he has nothing. He oh, doesn't have his no. fireball. The princess is late. This is done. Oh the thumbs up, oh my, the B <laughs> Benzer and Rido. Benzer Rido, you have gone and done it, kid, and oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Oh. Way to be sneaky about that. You do not often see that kind of play with a mortar deck. Really off, really awesome stuff here. You use the fireball once again, and obviously the, the minion horde. Yeah. Shadow Smokey yeah. literally only has the princess and nothing else for it. And that's a free mini horde summon if you're looking towards Panzer Rhino. Yeah, this time he's got the princess, but the miner coming in a fireball as well to protect the that's miner it. here. That's it. That's that tower down. 30 seconds left. Oh I my god. I don't know god. if Shadow Smokey can do this. OG and Entis after being so. the closest they've ever been to getting a victory in this season is probably going to lose it once again. This is. This, this is, is devastating. This is terrible. This is just. It's just heartbreaking for them. One crown played his, played his heart out. He really, really almost just single-handedly gave OG Entis a win here. Couldn't quite get it done. Oh, the laughter emote at the end and the... Oh. Uh, this is fun music coming out on your screen, but this is not fun music for OG Entis.